Hello fellow hunters, it's Panda here. Today I'm extremely excited to show you this build we've made for a tempered Zunoga in Event Quest, The Wrath of Thunder Descents. Since Elotron update has been delayed, Capcom has tweaked the reward rates for two quests. One of it is this quest, which drops jewels. So if you're farming the rarest jewels, you do need this build. I absolutely love this build because this build has the Kirin 3 set bonus. Great luck! That increases your chance of more quest rewards. And yes, it works. Some types that is, but that's quite a high chance of it happening. And what I also love about this build is that you don't have to tenderize for 100% affinity to hit all criticals. Since we already have 100% affinity even without that tenderizing, but if you or someone else do tenderize, then it's a bonus for you to deal more damage. For me, I personally hate the thought of tenderizing in Icebound because I just can't get it right and I spend lots of time and potions trying to tenderize. But with this build, I don't have to worry about it anymore. Just shoot, guard, reload, and then shoot again. You do want to stay till the end of the video because I'm going to give you some tips on using spread on Tempered Zenoga. So for those who's watching us for the first time, hello and welcome. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. In general, spread is a pretty much beginner friendly weapon. Each shot gives out 7 hits on the monster, each hitting around 30 to 40 damage, that is 210 to 280 damage in 1 second. Technically speaking, all the other weapon builds are able to do the same amount of damage per second, but Spread doesn't really need to have much dodging or concentration skills. You just aim and shoot. Then when the monster attacks, just look at it, and your heavy bow gun will guard you and you can continue to damage. Note that to maximize your spread damage, you have to shoot the monster within the critical distance. You can tell by looking at your crosshair. When your crosshair shows a double circle when you look at the monster, then you are within its critical distance. If you shoot within this distance, you deal the maximum amount of damage according to what your build is. However, if you walk out of this distance and shoot, you will not be able to deal a lot of damage. Spread damage is affected by the raw damage of players, critical damage, hit zone values of the monster's part, distance to the target, and the consistency of hits to increase damage. So when making a spread build, we need to take all of these into consideration to craft a high damage build. First, always focus on critical chance and damage as they are basic skills to increase your damage exponentially. If you have 100% affinity, you'd be hitting all critical hits. Critical hits are shown with a star on the bottom of the number. For more information on damage skills, check out this video. This build has a 100% affinity from Critical R level 7, it gives 40%, Agitated level 7, 20%, Weakness Exploit Level 3, No Tenderize, gives 30%. Weapon Augmentation, 10%. Weapon Base Affinity, 5%. With that, we would need Critical Boost Level 3 to boost your critical damage to 140%. This greatly increases your damage. Now that we've settled the criticals, we should focus on the defensive skills like Guard and Health Boost. Guard Level 3 does its job reasonably well. You can add Divine Blessing if you can fit it when you're making your own builds. Next, we want to focus on increasing our damage further to this build by adding skills. I suggest aiming for free element ammo up first, as it gives you a larger clip size, so you can shoot more ammo without reloading, as reloading takes 2 seconds. And when the monster is down, it is a lot of damage that you could have dealt during the opening if you reload at this time. A spread is a specific ammo type. It has a spread skill that increases specifically its damage. This is found in spread jewels. Level 2 spread boosts spread damage by 12.5% in this build. So this is pretty much essential as well. Note that non-elemental boost does not work for this weapon even if we're just using spread, which is a non-element. 
This is because the weapon itself does have an element ammo that is dragon ammo. For bow guns, non-elemental boost only affects those that cannot use any elemental ammo. Moving on to bow gun mods, augmentations and awakenings. Since the spread is shot at close range, we add two close range attack up to increase damage of spread when attacking at close range. Then three shields for better guarding for comfort. For augmentations, put one affinity and one attack. Since awakenings support the build, we are adding three attack up five for more damage. One spread capacity three, which doubles the clip size of spread. Lastly, put one recoil suppressor, as for this bowgun, you only need one of it to reduce the recoil. Why did we put recoil suppressor and awakenings instead of the mods of bowgun? One close ranged attack up in the mods would increase more damage than one attack up 5 in awakenings. That being said, recoil suppressor is quite a hard awakening to roll for, so if you're unable to roll for that, you can go for attack up in your awakening and then put the recoil suppressor in your mods but do note that this would reduce the damage moving on to mentals and boosters for comfortable playing go for health booster and glider mental you could place the health booster on the ground and stay inside it while guarding and attacking in this way you don't have to sheath and eat potions every now and then for glider mental equip iron wall jewel 4 and shield up jewel to boost your guard levels and give you the guard up skill when your health booster is on cooldown. Guard up blocks all attacks as long as you have stamina to tank them and does not reduce your health while guarding. It also prevents you from getting lights. It's a tanker's best friend. Now for the item loadouts, for lesser restocking time, you have to bring spread ammo level 1 and gunpowder level 3 with you to craft spread ammo level 3 while you are in battle. Also bring needle berry to craft spread ammo level 1 to craft spread ammo level 3. With this, you will never run out of ammo in the entire run, so you don't have to restock at all. Also bring your drugs, demon drug, demon powder, and might seed to increase your damage. And of course, the basic item box, max potions, Mega Nutrients, Mandagora to instantly heal and get back to fight. For a basic item box, radio menu and item bar, check out this video. Remember to set your custom radial shortcuts to craft spread level 1 and spread level 3 in the middle of the fight. And arrange your ammo positions and item bar. I'm gonna leave you guys with tips on how to dodge or position yourself for this spread build. We want to position ourselves at a place where we can shoot and deal the most amount of damage on the monster. This is where we have to take in the heat zone values of each part of the monster. Now on the normal and uncharged tempered Xenogre, spread ammo deals the most amount of damage on its head, then its neck, and then its forelegs. So these three parts are where you want to focus on in order of priority when it is uncharged. When it is charged, you want to go for head, then neck. Four legs, back or tail would work too and might be a better option if you're unable to reach its head when it's down. So you would want to position yourself slightly diagonal to its front, near its hands and aim for his head. Look out for the hand slams though. Don't stand right in front of the monster because it will just keep slamming you. We always want to observe the monster before we attack or sheath our weapon. Remember that guard does not happen if we are using our weapon to reload or attack. So always observe the monster to see his next move before you do anything. If he is doing an attack, make sure you are facing him and just guard it. Never ever show your back to him. If Xenogar goes crazy and spamming his attack all the way, then take out your weapon and stand still and then aim at him to guard it. He will get tired eventually. If you keep on running, he will keep on doing them and then not stop. You might even die trying to run away. If you are in the front of the monster, watch out for his pins. It heals his stamina and he would spam his attacks on you when he's done with his pin moves. So always roll away. 
Sometimes if you're off the range, he will do this hip hop dance move which will hit you with his tail. So watch out for that too. Make sure to use the boulder and vine trees to your advantage and wall shots to make openings. The optimal thing to do is first wall shot then drop the boulder. This is because he turns red eyed after boulder. You could also do a sleep boulder after wall shotting since Safi vs Cannon can also use sleep ammo. For the vine traps, you could lure him by standing near it so his attacks would hit the tree and then the vines drop on the ground for the vines to trap him. However, if he's far from the vine tree and most of your teammates are not near it either, don't bother luring him there unless the entire team comes over to you. That's all from me today. Hope you guys learned something. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.